Whoa, indeed. Hi, Alex here from Digital Foundry. Three weeks back at GDC 2018 in San Francisco, USA, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and a number of development studios previewed the future of real-time graphics with a number of GPU-accelerated ray tracing demos. These demos were coupled with an announcement from Microsoft of an in-development extension to the DirectX 12 API to officially support GPU-based ray tracing, DXR, as well as an announcement from NVIDIA for their own direct support of GPU ray tracing with NVIDIA's RTX. So the future is here, but what can you, the viewer, expect from the next generation of games? What improvements will there be, and how does this ray tracing affect game graphics in the near term? Let's go back to that starting clip of Star Wars from ILM and Epic. Here you can see so many ray traced elements on the screen. The soft shadow underneath the trooper's helmet, Captain Phasma's arm machine catching all the elements you can imagine, or even things like motion blur or depth of field no longer showing those artifacts you expect from rasterized effects, where information is missing behind the object so it needs to be reconstructed or faked. It all just looks right as a representation of the real world. It does not have those gamey problems your mind may have become used to over the years. Though there's a catch here. This is not exactly what you can expect from GPU ray tracing in the near term for games, nor in next generation consoles for that matter. That Star Wars demo is running at 1920 by 1080 at around 24 FPS on four NVIDIA Titan 5s, hooked up via NVLink an extremely high speed interconnect allowing for advanced GPU cooperation. That's around 60 teraflops of GPU compute and 2.6 terabytes per second of combined usable bandwidth. Given the cost of even one of these GPUs and their power and thermal requirements, next-gen consoles producing these kind of visuals is not exactly what we can really expect from GPU ray tracing in the near term. But singular elements from this demo and elements of demos from other developers such as Remedy, Seed, 4A Games, and Epic give us hints at what can be expected for real-time GPU ray tracing in upcoming games. But let's first talk about the core of that difference. Until more recently, games have been saving performance by utilizing the rasterized pipeline driven by GPUs to its utmost and primarily in screen space. Simply put, rasterization are the maths describing a shape or form and converting them down into discrete units of approximation, pixels, polygons, or line segments. This of course has the problems you see from any reduction of more complex information into a more simplified form. For example, you may have a mathematical description of a circle, and when you try to represent it with discrete units, as in pixels, you can quickly see visible problems with aliasing due to undersampling. Or the position of sampling and rasterization can also have a knock-on effect. Take shadow maps, for example, in most games. Depending upon where the sampling occurs, on the forward or back face of the geometry, you can have convergence problems where the shadows do not line up with the object casting it. Lighting these representations in rasterization is also a simplification in itself. Light transport is the bouncing and scattering of photons and the lighting and relighting of surfaces. This is reduced to a more or less one-dimensional problem in rasterization of how a surface is shaded. So you have all this complexity reduced down to discrete, more predictable, and calculable units for GPUs to accelerate at producing. Ray tracing takes a different, more total approach, where the maths actually model out that scattering movement of photons by shooting rays or cones of rays into a scene. It is a more ground truth way of getting the results of how light behaves, but you have to send out a lot of rays to do that. Unlike those gamey looking problems from undersampling and rasterization, undersampled ray trace results are just really noisy and do not make a cohesive image. Ray tracing is more accurate, yet requires more hardware grunt on average to make it presentable. The problem of having to shoot so many rays out for it to start looking correct at all could be fixed in time with more powerful hardware and shooting more rays, but developers and research have been looking into denoising, which is a way of anti-aliasing that data and fudging those pixels based upon previous ray casts, frames, or machine learned patterns so that those expensive rays can have their quality be maximized. Even with DXR being a new thing, developers have been attempting to integrate the ideas or even bits of ray tracing into real-time graphics for a while now, but mainly within screen space. Ambient occlusion, real-time reflections, and even shadows have been recreated based upon screen space information in a lot of games. And screen space information is that information present only in the current rendered frame, so all these techniques have the problem of not being informed by the rendering of what is happening outside of the screen space. Take Crisis 2 for example here. Real-time reflections disappear for objects you cannot see. Real-time ambient occlusion shows up or does not show up in areas where it really makes any physical sense 
or even the hyper-realistic Kingdom Come Deliverance. Here, its shadows for small objects warp and bend depending upon how close they are to the screen edge, or if they're occluded. These areas and those general problems of rasterization mentioned earlier are exactly those areas where GPU-based ray tracing will help in the future and near term in games. Ray tracing aims to, but doesn't need to, move those approximations from screen space to approximations in world space, based upon the principles of light transport. Take those problems we had with real-time reflections mentioned in Crisis 2. Notice how the Remedy Northlight engine demo does not have reflections disappear when objects move off screen. Or here in the Metro Exodus demo, how the indirect lighting and shadowing remains consistent throughout the image as it moves through the scene, with no shading disappearing at screen edges or looking different as the camera moves. Or notice how razor sharp the shadows here in this Unreal Engine demo are, and how they actually line up with the object, yet soften towards their point of termination. Those are the immediate areas of real-time rendering in games that will definitely get better in the future. But wait, there's more! You don't even have to wait! Games are already solving these problems with GPU-based ray tracing right now! Whoa. Take Playbook for example. It uses GPU-based cone tracing to generate shadows, the shapes of the clay, and the mid-scale ambient occlusion you see in the distance. These visual elements are all cone traced into a simplified version of the scene, represented by signed distance fields. You can think of them as blobby, amorphous versions of objects you see on the screen in most games. Or take CryEngine for example, where recent games like Kingdom Come Deliverance generate global illumination and large-scale ambient occlusion by tracing into a simplified version of the scene made up of voxels, basically a LEGO version of the scene. Even the 60fps Fortnite on consoles uses GPU-based ray tracing, foregoing expensive of shadow maps beyond the first cascade, Fortnite actually saves on performance on the CPU and GPU and generates arguably more accurate visuals by utilizing ray-traced ambient occlusion and shadows from a signed distance field representation of the game world. So to say ray tracing is finally coming to real-time rendering for games as a result of DXR is inaccurate. So even if developers do not make use of ray tracing right now, or through DXR in the future, that does not mean that DXR or ray tracing in general will not aid them in development. For games like Uncharted 4 or other games that want to focus their rendering budget on other elements that are not real-time ray tracing and instead have static lighting and static shadows, GPU-based ray tracing can impact the game's development efficiency by allowing lighting artists to preview the results of baked lighting and shadowing in real time, thus saving development time for iteration instead of waiting minutes to hours to see how an in-game environment would look with all the lighting. There are even more exotic uses of GPU-based ray tracing which have yet to be fully explored where the method and sampling and data structure of ray tracing could see its use for non-visual elements, such as AI pathfinding or procedural distribution of objects. In speaking with developers about GPU ray tracing and DXR, we can surmise that the current structure and nascent version of the API has its problems. It is limited to Windows 10 and makes assumptions about the type of ray tracing developers will try and use. Yet DXR and NVIDIA's RTX are seen as a way of getting the ball rolling toward more research and more workload implementations in game engines and then iterate on in the future versions of the API. Specifically, denoising and the lighting of non-opaque surfaces and the best mixes and matches of rasterization and ray tracing are going to be a big research area in the future. So developers are going to be experimenting with this in shipped games and internally to find the best way to get the best visual results from those ultra expensive rays. And with the push from Nvidia and Microsoft and the subsequent similar push from AMD and Kronos, there will be a standardization of practices and a programming API which will make it easier for developers to share and converse about these experiments. So the future looks bright and it's probably going to be really shiny. And with that being said, thank you for taking the time to watch this video today. If you do like what you saw and heard, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. If you would like to discuss this content or just ray tracing in general, write a comment below or follow myself and Digital Foundry on Twitter. This is Alex, bidding you farewell und auf Wiedersehen. You think she heard us?